Well, ladies and gentlemen, Elimination Chamber is in, a, is in the books, and man, what a ride it has been. I was fortunate enough to see the whole event, and I'm still trying to calm down a bit from, from what's happened. Hello, everybody. I am Hitman Cos, giving my review uh, on November 2018. Now, this year's event was happening in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I was hoping, you know, it'd be as good of a show as it was last year. And I'd say for at least the most part, they didn't, they didn't disappoint. Without wasting any time, let's start with the pre-show. Of course, you know, they were, <laughs> they were showing, they were giving, you know, a uh, whole bunch of gook and whatnot. I really didn't pay attention to much of it. And then, uh, then they were and having doing a Q and A with Kurt Angle again. I wasn't paying attention to that either. But then eventually they had a match: the Club versus the Miz Taraj. Your just standard tag match. I really didn't think much of it. Uh, the, the match ended with. If I remember correctly, um, I think Bo Dallas getting hit with the magic killer. Yeah, yeah bottom line, uh, the club won. And, and you know, hopefully, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, you know, one of these days. The, the club will insert themselves back into the tag title picture. Seems to me that, that they've either been too busy you know, uh, kicking it with Umbrella, not that not that that's a bad thing, because it ain't, or just or just you know twiddling their thumbs. Hopefully, there's a sign for good things to come. Then, yeah. Then on to the main card. I must say, the video package they showed for the women's elimination chamber match was epic. I, I loved the, the, the whole package, um, um, and and the music for it was excellent. I mean, honestly, I'm trying, I think I might just try and get a hold of that song. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Anyways. With that being said, um, the uh, the women's elimination chamber match came, started started off the night. Um, and and the whole thing started off with um, Sonya Deville versus Bailey. Uh, pr pretty stand, pretty standard shit, you know. Uh, I'll admit, although I don't watch NXT that much, I must say I really like Mandy Rose specifically because she does the V trigger, or at least her version of the of the V trigger. I'm all, I I always just feel the need to the shot to call out that name whenever she does that 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 high knee. You know what I'm saying? And then, then you know. After a while, Mandy Rose came out, and they started. And then they started teeing off on Bailey, having their way with with her, doing as they pleased. Um, but like, 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 uh, you know, a couple of rookies, they they didn't eliminate her, and they wound up paying for it. Uh, then in came Sasha Banks, freaking. She she came in to help even the odds, even though freaking Bailey was was trapped on the cage. I, I thought that I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, the first elimination comes when Mandy Rose taps out to the bank statement, and it's then it was down to just 
something else. Then afterwards, Mickey James came out like a house of fire and started going off on everybody, man. She, she started wilding like crazy. I'm like, I'm like, God damn, I'm like, God damn, man. Yeah, so. Then um, she decides to get a little creative, hops up on top of the pod and dives on to Sonya Deville with a loot desk press and is able to pin her. I was a bit disappointed to see uh, Deville go. I, I personally want to see her go longer. I like I like these MMA stars turned wrestlers. And although she, I don't I don't view her as highly as to do Shayna Baszler, I still view her highly. You know what I'm saying? But you know it, it is what it is. Her time might might come eventually. Then um. Eventually, Beckham Bailey and then eliminated Mickey James with the Bailey to Belly. Look, I understand she's a hugger and all that, but I just can't see a Bailey to Belly suplex as a finisher. Like, I just can't. What? Oh, then, um. What's this? What's this? Oh, God. Bailey hit, um, if I'm, not mistake, if I'm not mistaken, Bailey hit Sasha Banks then with a, with a bail. No, 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 she didn't. She didn't. And then after Mickey James got eliminated, um, Alexa, uh, Alexa got caught with a roll up, and, and, and there that was. Then it was just down to Alexa and Sasha. Now I'm gonna say there was some good, there was some good spots here. Like my favorite spot in particular was when Alexa Bliss hit Twisted Bliss from the top of the pod. But then after she hit it, freaking Sasha put her in the bank statement. <laughs> and uh, but she was able, to, Alexa was able to get out of it. Well, then, well, then freaking um, match finally came to an end when um, Sasha was on top of another another pod, and while she was on top of the, the pod, it, it looked like she was gonna go for some sort of top rope move. However, um, um, Alexa pushed her in, into the pod. And then hit her, hit her with a rope on DDT to win the match. And so she retained the title and going to WrestleMania. And, uh, <laughs> and her uh, post-match interview was pretty nice. Where at first, you know, it seemed like she was turning face, thanking all the fans. Tears filled with her in her eyes, and then she pulled a uh, uh, Stephanie McMahon. And if you will, because then after she was all tearful, like in like in an instant, she went back to her to her bitchy attitude. However, the however the crowd didn't boo to it; they cheered with it. Uh, and 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 like the reason why I compared to Stephanie McMahon is because um when she was feuding with Brie Bella. After, the week after she got arrested, she was all um, looking apologetic and whatnot, trying to make amends. Then Brie wanted a match against her. She accepted. It sounded like she was about to cry. And then, and then she said one last thing, slapped her in the face, and then, and then changed, and then switched her voice up to what she normally sounds like, and said, "I'm gonna make you my bitch." That's what. bottom line. <laughs> that the women's cha first ever women's chamber match, uh, it was all right in my book. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, but there's something I gotta say about the Delimitation Chamber as a whole. But that can wait till afterwards. Okay. Now then, 
Afterwards, we have we have the bar taking on Titus Worldwide for the Tag Team Championship. You know, I've been really puzzled at, as to as to why Titus Worldwide was, was seemingly getting this push. Not that I had a problem with it because I love Titus Worldwide. But but let me say this about Apollo. How many more wrestlers that have two names are gonna keep getting their first or last name cut off? Because, you know, he was known as Apollo Crews, and now they dropped the Crews, and now he's just Apollo. Like, seriously, how many more names are, are they gonna keep doing this to? I'm getting tired of this, man. Just just leave their name as it is, man. Break it. <laughs> A wise man once said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. His, his name was Apollo. His name was Apollo Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Leave it at that. It's just fine. But, you know, it is what it is. So, and, you, and you know, going to this match, you know, Titus Worldwide was uh, 3-0 and against the bar. You know, personally, part of me was, you know, hoping that Titus Worldwide would win. But, you know... A reality had to sit in, but you know they put a, they put on a real good show in this match. I was I was I was genuinely pleased with what I saw from uh, as far as the work with with Titus and Apollo. The, they they definitely definitely show, showed the showed their skills. And, and let me say this: I've never ever doubted or discredited the the immense skill that Apollo Crews has. Not once. My issue with him was that he never had a gimmick. But now, with Titus Worldwide, he actually has a gimmick. So now, you know, people can get behind him like I have. You know what I'm saying? But, eventually in the match, <laughs> um, it came to an end when, um, what's his face? When Sheamus and Cesaro did a double, did a, did a double team uh, white noise onto Apollo Crews to, to get the one, two, three, and the bar retains. Yeah, you know, uh, despite the uh, their loss, their, their losses to the time worldwide, I must say I really love the teaming of of the bar because you know at one point you know they were bitter enemies, they couldn't stand each other. Then you know they were forced to to team up with to, to to team up with one another, and then you know immediately everybody, including myself, were already right, writing them off, and you know weren't liking it. But uh, but eventually they wound up getting the getting their chemistry worked out, and now and now they're the best heel tag team on Raw. Um, and how and and how they're they're able to and the and the tag team moves they're able to come up with, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a cre it's a credit to their to their chem to their chemistry, you know. You really you really couldn't ask for uh, better rivals turn tag partners uh, story than that. But then again, you know that hasn't been the first time a uh there have been a pair of rivals turned into successful tag partners i mean look at uh, the primetime players uh, i mean it's not the best example but but it's a more recent example i can think of besides them where darren young and titus o'neill they couldn't stand each other there were bitter rivals back on nxt when it was when it was a crappy game show and then titus o'neill turned heel and then he kept trying to get Darren Young to turn heel, and then eventually he did. They became a team, and, and they became a team, and they and they gelled together well. The only the only issue was that uh, was that freaking it was obvious that they were, that they were a ripoff of Crime Time. Sure, they, they didn't wear the sagging pants or the or the Tims or nothing, but it was obvious the way they were acting that they were ripping off Crime Time. You know what I'm saying? But it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the, the bar wins. Great, great, not good match. Can't, can't really complain. Uh, up next, 
um, was Oscar versus Nia Jax. You know, given the promo package that was given for Oscar, you'd think that she was going to lose this match. And given what was going on, freaking. Actually, before I said, before I go into the match, you know, I, I, I noticed that they gave a, a new stage to Nia Jax. Eh, the stage was all right, but it, but it, but it looked like, but it looked like the exact same stage as Absolution, except in a different shade of purple. I mean, I don't mean to nitpick, but it's what I, it's what I do. And don't believe me? Go act post nineties, act from souls. I, I I nitpick like crazy. Anyways, well, onto the match. You know, like I said, given the promo package, you you think that that Oscar was gonna lose tonight, and based on what was happening during most of the match, yeah, it looked like it was gonna happen because during most of the match, freaking Oscar was getting her back, was getting her ass handed to her. Not saying she did. Not saying she ain't getting offense in because she did. She tried to she tried to get a, a leg bar in, but but now I countered that and slammed her against the uh, turnbuckle. Then she put her in the arm. Uh, <laughs> then I, then actually I'll put, there, was, there was this point of match that I didn't like, where freaking I don't know whether it was a counter or not. But it looked like freaking Nia Jax tried to do no 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 freaking um Nia tried to go for her um for her leg drop, but Oscar but Oscar rolled out the way, but she didn't move completely out the way, and Nia wound up leg dropping Oscar's legs, and then she, and Oscar was limping around for a bit. Hopefully that shit wasn't nothing serious, but. <laughs> but but then eventually a match ended. Um, but Oscar uh, Oscar caught uh, Nia Jack slipping and put her in a roll up and pinned her. But upon getting her hand raised, Nia attacked her, beat the crap out of her, and blasted her through the barricade. I mean this. Spirit was ill, man. It's good luck. She killed it, man. So, uh, I mean, sure, Nia's not going to the not going to WrestleMania, even though, in my opinion, she should be challenging for the title. She's been violated for way too long. Over, she overlooked for too long. It's about time she had a chance, but hey, her time will hopefully come eventually. You know what I'm saying? Nia. Uh, Oscar, Oscar won the match, but Nia got the last laugh, and and Alexa Bliss was enjoying it too. See, seeing Oscar get put through the barricade, you know what I'm saying? Moving on, we have, in my opinion, was more of a filler match: Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. Let me see. I I like both both wrestlers in this match, but. You, but you could even tell the crowd did not give a fuck about this match. No one cared about this match at all. Because because during most of the time, you could even see in the crowd that they weren't even paying attention. Because some idiots in the crowd brought beach balls again and were, they were playing with it. And then if that wasn't a sign that no one cared, they, they, were, they started uh, doing random chants. Like they were giving Rusev Day chance, whole bunch of other shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you know, in my opinion, if Matt Hardy had a little bit more creative freedom, he could get a lot more people behind the Woken uh, gimmick. And unfortunately, Bray Wyatt has been dwindled down to uh, to uh, to a very I don't know. I'd say see through character because because now it's always the same formula with Bray Wyatt. He'll start a feud with somebody, cut a good promo, talk a big game, but then once the, once a once the big blow off comes, he loses. It, it's, it's it's really annoying. 
Because a guy, a guy as good as he is should not be looking like this. Should not be in this situation. But, you know, what you gonna do? Yeah, personally, the match was okay. I watched the match. It was okay. But even, but even still, I still think it wasn't right for the freaking fans to be playing with the beach ball. Don't get me wrong, you know, the whole beach ball mania. I'll let the fans do it. But, but come on, man. <laughs> when they don't watch the match like that, it's always showing that you don't respect the wrestlers in that ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 have, have some respect, have some decency. You want, you want to play around with a beach ball? Go to the beach. Go to, go to your house, and, and, or something. Don't bring it to a wrestling event. Man, come on. Uh, okay. Moving on, we have the men's uh, elimination chamber, as we all know. Miz was entering first, and Elias was entering last. Now, let me say this, freaking Ron Strowman pretty much owned the chamber. Because he was whooping ass, taking names, and like literally freaking... Uh, but on, for the longest up until the end, everybody was throwing everything they had at him, and and nothing would put him down. It was like this dude was was made out of stone. But you know, but you know, it is what it is. Um, funny, funny enough, Miz went in first, got eliminated first by Braun Strowman via a running power slam. Then, uh, then, um, actually, then when Elias came out at first, when it was time for him to come out, he didn't, he didn't come out immediately. He stayed in the pod. And, uh, similar to what, um, Chris Jericho did back in, um, I think 2010. When he won the world title in the Mission Chamber, and also, and also, um, Alexa Bliss did, did that same thing. Well, at least tried to. Um, well, yeah. And then, um, at one point, everybody was down from from desperately trying to take down Braun Strowman, and Braun was down too. That prompted Elias to come in and, and and try and pick pick the bones, but did not work. Then, and that, then actually before Miz got on, there was um there was one part that I liked where freaking um Roman Reigns, uh, yeah Roman Reigns, um Braun Strowman, no Roman Reigns, Elias. No, Roman Reigns, Ben Balor, Seth Rollins, and yeah, Elias were all on their knees, pause. And Miz hit them all with the it kicks. Now, and you know, he's on Raw. So I wish Michael Cole would stop bringing and uh, stop saying that he <laughs> that that the kicks are Daniel Bryan's. Yes, he paradises the it kicks from the yes kicks, but he's on Raw now. Stop bringing it up. Drop it. It's annoying. Anyways, um, <laughs> after um, Elias got eliminated because um, Elias got eliminated next after Miz because um, he, <laughs> he was he was feeling himself. And tried and, and tried to pin Strowman when when Strowman when Strowman quickly got up and went a power slam and thanks for coming. Then, then freaking um with Strowman 
Oh, this was this, this sequence was crazy. First, he got oh hit with spear. And then he kicked out. Then he got hit with the attitude adjustment. Kicked out of one. Yes, you heard me right. He he kicked out of the attitude adjustment at one. Then Seth Rollins hit him with the curb stomp. Kicked out. Yeah, he rolled uh, to the outside, got hit with the coup de gras, kicked out. Then Cena, uh, and then once he rolled back into the ring, Cena tried to hit him with the attitude adjustment. Strowman you know, powered out of, uh, powered out of it, countering it, hit him with the power slam. One, two, three. And Cena was gone. Next. Then uh, later on, Finn Balor. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, try to try to hit an aerial move. Try to hit an aerial move. Then Balor caught him. Power slam. Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, it was it, it was it was funny, but really should have been expected. But how well uh, Braun was cleaning house, you yeah. know. You know, but but it was still a spectacle to behold. Next, um, it was it was Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Braun Strowman. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins immediately agreed to team up, um, team up to take out Strowman, but they could only do so much. Um, they got him out to the outside of the ring on on the right, and during then, Seth Rollins turned on Roman Reigns. And, and hit him with a couple of strikes. And during which he he knocked Roman Reigns down. And then Strowman got back to his feet. And needless to say, Seth tried, tried as hard as to fight back. But Strowman hit him with a power slam. And see you bye. Then it was down to Reigns and Strowman. And I'll admit, my heart was pounding. Because I was hoping that, my, that, that what happened, that what happened wasn't going to happen. But unfortunately, it did happen. Reigns hit Strowman with two spears, because the first spear, uh, uh, Strowman ate and then got back to his feet. Then Reigns hit him with a second spear, pinned him, and Reigns won. And so, once again, Roman Reigns is going to WrestleMania, the main event for the fourth time. I don't, <laughs> and, and this time it's going to be a repeat of WrestleMania 31. I don't understand how, why Vince is so stupid to, to constantly book, book the same guy in the main event of WrestleMania every year when yet every year he keeps giving a lackluster performance. I've, I've already said before in previous episodes that all of his matches are only as good as the opponent he faces. And unfortunately for him, no offense to Brock, but it's not going to be that good because for one thing, Brock, Brock doesn't doesn't necessarily like to, like to work as hard as he used to. I'm not saying he can't put on a great match. He does. He he normally chooses not to. And against a guy like Roman Reigns, it's not real. It's not, it's not, it's not like he can anyways. Because being in a match with Roman Reigns, you might as well have have a have a 300-pound a 300-pound weight chain and chain to your ankle. I'll say this though: seeing Roman getting his teeth kicked in by. Braun after the match was a bit of a refresher. It, it, to, to an extent, it helped ease the pain of the real crap shoot that we're going to see at WrestleMania. Part of me is considering not even watching the main event when it happens. And freaking, um, and, and hey, and hey, if you, if you don't believe me of how of how bad that guy is in the ring, freaking look at his track record at WrestleMania. Let's look. 
WrestleMania 31, he faced Brock Lesnar. The match literally got saved by Seth Rollins because no one, because no one wanted to see Brock win because of the fact that he's a part-timer, and no one in the right mind wanted to see Roman Reigns win because of him, you know, they pretty much trying to force him down our throats. And no one in the right mind wants to see him win at all. You know? It makes me sick that they keep trying to push this, man. He's only going to get booed more and more. It's not going to work. I don't know when it's going to get through that thick skull. Maybe, maybe freaking once Vince finally kicks the bucket, we, we can finally, you know, get, get shit done the right way. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. Match at WrestleMania 31 literally got saved by Seth Rollins. Saved the whole night. Then we look at WrestleMania 32. He faced Triple H. And no offense to Triple H, but the match was boring. Like, like literally, the match was boring. It droned on for as long as it did. Pretty sure it, it, it was pushed in 30 minutes. If not, it was already at that. And and, and, I, and I was losing interest in it quickly. You know what I'm saying? I I didn't. And I really wasn't liking how how it was going into. And then, need to say, Reigns won. No, no one was happy. Then, 33. He faced Undertaker. We all know. And and, and that match alone proved how horrible of an in-ring performer Roman Reigns is. Because it, because he he obviously can't keep up with the with all the talent that's around his age. But if you can't but if you can't keep up with a fifty year old man with a bad hip, then you then you suck. And, and this is not a knock against the Undertaker, not at all. He is among the very greatest of all time. He's he's weathered the storm. But I understand it was his choice to face Roman Reigns. For Roman Reigns to end his career, but come on, man! If, if, uh, of all the people that ch to choose, you choose uh, one of the worst wrestlers to ever live. I mean, this. I mean, uh, I mean, this guy is a wor is a worse in ring performer than than freaking Jackie Gata, worse than Jenna Marasca, and, and, and you and, and you wanted him to, uh, to 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 retire you. Come on, man. I mean, hell, I would have, I would have even preferred you facing John Cena than, than facing Roman Reigns. But, but no, the 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 match. No offense to Taker, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. It it proved it, it exposed every single weak point that Roman Reigns has, and then and then also. Freaking, who could who could forget that that disgraceful botch? But freaking, it looked like he Reigns was supposed to counter Undertaker's Tombstone Power Driver into something, but but his hand slipped and dropped Undertaker, and he tried to pick him back up, but he couldn't. And then dude kept bouncing on the ropes back and uh, back and forth like a little kid running in a circle before he finally speared. Uh, speared um, Undertaker and ended the match. Honestly, and it's pretty much at this point, everyone pretty much knows Reigns gonna beat Lesnar at WrestleMania and win the Universal Title. Yeah, I, I, I wish freaking. Bring him. Vince wasn't so damn hard-headed in trying to do this, but uh, it, uh, yeah. But you know, nothing's gonna change his mind. Yeah, he 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 doesn't he doesn't listen to the fans. Hell, I don't even think he, I don't even think he likes the fans. You know, but but you know, but you know, the, the, there's other stuff that's gonna hopefully ease the pain. And I can honestly say, Elementary Chamber wasn't that bad, but but ben, but Roman Reigns ruined the whole night. And yeah, there was the whole contract signing with uh, Ronda Rousey. I'm sorry I didn't get into that. I, I really wanted to cover the matches before, and, and not that. But I'm gonna say it was nice seeing Ronda Rousey do a whole contract signing thing, but. 
I know it was her first night, but man, I've never seen someone struggle so badly on the mic on their first night. But, you know, I will cut her some slack. It was her first night, you know. But even still, very, very cringeworthy. But I thought it was funny with the looks that Kurt Angle was giving. Obviously, he had something on his mind. And then he was pretty much planting the seeds of of, uh, of of some shade that the authority was throwing Ronda's way behind her back. And yeah, the authority came out. <laughs> one of the, one part I, I specifically liked the freaking um, Kurt was talking was saying how was um, bring him was bring him back how they uh, how the authority talked about finally getting Ronda Rousey, but they were speaking ill of her. And just as he was about to say, bitch, we're preferring to run around. Uh, they were calling her that. Freaking Triple H cut, her, cut him off and tried to uh, play off Kurt, exposing them and saying that he's got the flu. <laughs> and then, so Kurt left. Well, what was, was leaving. Triple H was getting them to leave, but not before dropping the ultimate, the final dagger. By saying, by saying that Stephanie called Ronda a husband, a husband, and and Ronda was not pleased when she heard that. And then Drew Wedge got back into the ring, and freaking Ronda flipped him and put him through the tape. Then Stephanie did the single stupidest thing she could have ever done and slapped Rhonda in the face, shouting, who do you think you are? And when she, after she slapped her, Rhonda gave the intimidated look and the crowd, I love it. The crowd was chanting, you fucked up. And I bet you later on that, that's probably gonna get muted, but, but yeah, she didn't fuck up. However, Rhonda didn't attack her. Yeah, so Stephanie got off scot free. And Ronda signed the contract, and that was it. And you know that was uh, elimination chamber for you, for your ass. Now, like I said, the pay per view event was was decent, could have been better, but but like I said, Roman Reigns ruined the whole pay per view. But, need, but needless to say, despite the ending, uh, for the most part, I did enjoy it. it there, there were spots that I didn't care for, some spots that I didn't like. But other than that, you know, it wasn't that bad. Um, decent review, bad ending. <laughs> but I'm definitely looking forward to Fastlane. Hopefully SmackDown can can improve where Raw fucked up. Although I expect them to improve because well, this is SmackDown we're talking about. But the but you know this will you know, sum up uh, Hitman Kaz's review for WWE Elimination Chamber 2018 for your ass. Now I'm about to get up out of here. Everybody like this video. Give a comment if you if you feel the need to. Share it everywhere, please. Uh, hit, hit me up on my tw on my Twitter or Twitter, Instagram, and and Chrome Souls of Twitter and Instagram. And I'm out. Peace.